Good morning, everybody. Resale Rabbit here. I am gonna go thrifting this morning. Wasn't planning on it, but figured why not? I wasn't able to hit all the stores I wanted to yesterday, so let's stay in Green Bay. There's only a few thrift stores here. Uh, this is three Goodwills and a couple others. Let's go thrifting in Green Bay, see what we can find, and then we're gonna go back to the warehouse. I have a lot of listing to do stuff that I bought yesterday and some other stuff. I need to put on my seat belt. So that's what we're gonna do today. Also, no hat. Don't worry, I didn't lose it. It's right here. It's just really nice outside right now. It's 48 degrees. I'm ready to go to the beach, but unfortunately the beaches are still closed. So that's what we're doing today. Hope you enjoy it. Bye. See all the missing snow? This was under four feet of water the other day. All of these streets were buried. This is probably where the worst of it was in Green Bay. In fact, a lot of houses over here supposedly got condemned. People couldn't go back to it. This is where the evacuation was. My neighborhood was almost evacuated. They had an evacuation standby, they called it, where uh, the wind is really not liking my hair here. Uh, where basically we may get evacuated at any moment and they advised us to pack a go bag just in case. So that was fun, but this is where the worst of it was and that's why there's like no snow over here. First store of the day, Goodwill. This is a weird alarm clock. Simply the fact that it's weird is why I looked it up. The sound design, wacky wake up. I think I can get 20, 25 bucks for it. They want three. I also got this Sony clock radio. They want four bucks for it. I think I could probably get about 20, 25 for that. You do need an iPod to test it though. And a film camera, Minolta. Probably about the same thing, 25 bucks or so. I also found this, no price tag, but these often get separated from the cameras. There wasn't a camera here for it because I probably would have bought that too, but I could probably use this. Lastly, I got this Alabama napkin dispenser. Couldn't find any comps on it, but I think I can get like 30 bucks for it. Paid four. Hey, look, it's my girlfriend. Does that building look familiar? That's the former home of Wisconsin Overstock Outlet, the store I used to own right across from Walmart, right next to Goodwill. Now it's a martial arts studio. Next thrift store, just some breakfast over at McDonald's, is St. Vincent de Paul. This is a massive store. They have like four buildings. I've toured their back room before. They've got two floors of processing. Unfortunately, they have an eBay department, so a lot of their good stuff goes on eBay, but I still find some decent stuff here and there. Here's a decent item, $3. DM200 is the model. Should get about 50 bucks for it. It says new, the box is pretty open and mangled. The cords are still raveled up nice, so it looks like it probably wasn't used, but I'm gonna sell it as used. So that's all I got here. Fun fact about this store, all the shelving came out of Toys R Us. I was there when they were buying up just about everything, met some higher up people from this store. Quite an upgrade from what they had before. They even left some of the, the decals on, where it says like Barbie and whatnot. I just find that interesting. Let's go across town to Goodwill. Next is Bethesda Thrift Shop. Usually I don't find anything here. When I do, it's an absolute home run. If you remember back, I found a chicken clock. No joke, it was a clock that had a chicken playing a guitar. Found that here, sold it for like $250, $300, somewhere in that range. And more, more recently, I found an item for eight that I currently have listed for $1,500. I'm waiting to do a video on that item for when it sells. So hopefully it sells soon. This is just a few weeks ago. Uh, but those are the only two times I've ever really bought anything in here. I don't come here often, but when I do, it, it's a score. The rare occasion that I find something. So, a couple of items at this store. I got a router for $5.99 and a modem. It is used, but it's in the box for $7.99. I think I should be able to get about $25 bucks each for these. Uh, not amazing margins, but they should sell pretty quick. Speaking of Toys R Us, that's what's left of it. That's right next to Goodwill. Yeah. 
This Goodwill actually used to be a Best Buy, so it's decent in size, and it's probably the best one in Green Bay. So here for $3.99, got another router. I think I can get about 20, 25 bucks for it. This is interesting. This is an AT&T hotspot. They want $11.99. Uh, they seem to be going for about 50 bucks. A lot of them, the listing says unlocked, and obviously this probably isn't unlocked. But there are some still in that $50 range that just say AT&T. So I'm gonna take a gamble on it and see if I can sell it. Funny enough, this router actually sold on eBay before. Look at that, the old logo, this was quite a while. Terry Chang in Illinois, if you sold this router, if you're watching, you, I found it. So yeah, there you go. One more store to hit and uh, then I'm gonna get to the warehouse and do some listing. Last store of the day, Goodwill in Ashwaubenon. So, didn't find anything in this store. Usually, it's not that bare. My issue that I usually have with this store is there's no cell signal. Neither of my phones with two different carriers can get a signal in there. So uh, I'm always buying blind, but this time there's very little on the shelves, not anything really worth buying. So just got back to the warehouse and I got a check for $25 from a local consignment shop. You can kind of see the stuff that they sold for me. This is just junk that I got for free or had laying around or things that came out of storage units or I don't think I actually bought any of this. Maybe a couple of these I bought. So um, not too bad here. This is a very small check. Usually I'm doing about a hundred bucks a month for them, but I haven't dropped stuff off in a couple of months. So it's just residual at this point. So I just listed 22 items. If it all sells at my asking price, that's $1,119. Let me show you a few highlights. This is nothing I bought today. Three of these Department 56 houses, Christmas Village. I listed them for between 50 and 120 each. I bought a whole bunch of them and they're not really a priority list. So I'm slowly trickling them in, but I think they might sell. Uh, what else? This box. Oh, full of stuff. Some more of these scanners for 150, 170 each. Some broken cameras. Uh, what else is in here? Anything special? I think that's about it from there. Uh, let me show you. Oh, and a box full of vintage razors. Let me show you a couple other highlights. I listed this yesterday. Uh, very nice professional camcorder. Still runs on a tape, cassette tape, a DV tape to be specific. And this knitting machine. Hopefully you'll be seeing me ship these out soon. Um, I've got this listed for I think 200 something. I paid 70, I did pay up for this. The camera, I paid 75 and it's worth like twice as much. So let's go pull some orders. First thing, these are right where I left them yesterday. Sold them for a hundred bucks. There's nine of them in there. Uh, I gotta get those shipped out today. Next, we've got some ink cartridges. These actually sold a couple of days ago. Finally got paid for today. Sold them for 20 bucks. In the same area, we've got three uh, flip cameras. I got $13.99 for the three of them. These are all defective. So probably taking a loss, but at least I'm able to sell some of my broken stuff. I uh, took an offer of $13.99 for those three. Next, we've got... Uh, oh, I still have a bows in stock. How about here? Here we go, a Hitachi power cord. Came in that unit full of collectibles. I took an offer of $15 for this. Over here, I've got a Sega Saturn. I've been sitting on this for probably a little over a year, but I actually just listed it a couple of weeks ago. So if you remember, I would assume a little over a year ago, I bought two storage units in the middle of nowhere, a couple hours away near Madison. I spent about a hundred bucks on both. There was a whole bunch of sports cards that I just I went crazy in a local auction. I got like 500 bucks for them. There was, what else was, there was a bunch of Saturn games. I sold those pretty quickly. Um, I'm trying to think of other noteworthy things. There was a fender for an old 70s pickup truck that I showed. And a whole bunch of experts in the comments told me exactly which truck it went for, which was a lot of help. So that unit, if you can remember those, that's where the Saturn came from. I did actually go out and buy this controller to pair with it. Everything works on it. Uh, it's a little dirty, but 
that that's not part of it. I don't know why there's a leaf here. Uh, it works, plays games. Got a hundred bucks for this, ninety nine ninety nine. Back over here, I'm pretty sure this is the camera. I sold this camera. Buyer uh, returned it, and uh, it must have gotten damaged in shipping. So that was kind of a bummer. Uh, but it is a broken camera. It powers on. Here, let me. Where's the power button? Right. Try not to drop it. See how it doesn't really do anything. Yeah. So, zoom error. Uh, so I sold this for what was it? Twenty-five bucks. And that sold. Let's see. I think I listed that today. I'm pretty sure I listed that today. Yeah. So sold for, that was an offer. I think I listed it for like 30 or 40 bucks. Uh, I took an offer of 25, so sold basically instantly. Uh, next, we've got three PS3 controllers. Let me get them over here so I can show them to you. Uh, interesting story on these. So these I've just accumulated in storage. Yes, look at that thing. Uh, this one is in pretty rough shape too. Uh, this one, I'm not sure. It looks fine, but not, uh, no, this one was beat up too. So anyways, untested, sold as is. All I know is I plugged them in, the lights came on. Sold for parts or repair. Got $25 for all three of them. They actually sold. I took a best offer of $15 about two weeks ago. Dude never paid. He said he wanted two extra weeks to pay. And I said, no, open an unpaid item case, closed it, relisted these yesterday, and uh, they sold instantly uh within within 24 hours by the way if you're wondering this is um my receipt book how i keep track of cash sales i spent 91 dollars at everybody's rummage sale i just fill out a receipt so i can keep records of my purchases and finally in here with all the razors g2 this guy a vintage gillette razor i listed seven of these i think this one sold before I even finished listing them. Maybe I underpriced it, but I priced them all the same. And there's, I think there's another one identical to this too, also priced at $25. Sold it for $25, $24.99. That was my asking price. So those items sold. I got to get them shipped out. So, well, it's going to take me a minute, but you'll see it in like half a second. So with these phones, I find it's much quicker to stretch wrap than tape. So what I'm doing is wrapping them with a couple layers of bubble wrap and then using stretch wrap to hold the bubble wrap in place. It's much easier than pulling a few pieces of tape off, in my opinion. And I am making good use of my bubble wrap dispenser. This thing makes bubble wrapping things so much easier. I highly encourage anybody watching this to either purchase or make one of these. Something that holds the bubble wrap like this. It's just so quick and easy when you're not fiddling around trying to hold the, the the roll so this is the phones for anyone wondering it costs 33 dollars to ship so it sold for 100 subtract 33 subtract uh 13 percent or 13 dollars for 13 percent ebay and paypal fees i'm walking away with 54 bucks not an amazing deal uh that gives me what about six bucks per phone there were nine of them uh but this is a bad purchase. These phones had a little LCD screen on it that were Polycom, which is a great brand. They were really fancy looking, shiny. I thought for sure these phones would be $100 each. Uh, they were offered to me 25 bucks for the whole box of them. And I thought, you know, I can't go wrong here. There is no way I can go wrong. And in theory, I didn't. I mean, after shipping and fees, I still did more than double my money. It took a couple of weeks to sell. Uh, but I was really bummed out when I found out I didn't have $900 worth of phones there. So always look stuff up. I mean, I suppose there's not really a lesson here because I still doubled my money. I probably wouldn't have done it because it was a pain in the butt to pack this up. It took like six, seven minutes, which may not seem like a lot, but it takes on average like 20 to 30 seconds for me to pack up an order. I do a lot of smaller stuff though. Anyways, let's get this stuff to the post office. We've got that, the Sega, and then all this stuff. So I got some comments in the last video uh, asking if my post office was open 24 hours. It's not. Um, that's the post office there. They're closed. But this is the place for P.O. boxes, and they have a drop box here. 
right there. So I can come here anytime, 24 seven, and drop packages off. Nice part is they work often overnight and over the weekends in here. So this, these items are gonna get scanned in probably sometime in the middle of the night. So it's not like I need to wait until tomorrow. So that's definitely a nice little benefit. Um, I've had holidays, I've had Sundays, I've had two in the morning items scanned in. So it's definitely a nice benefit to be able to drop stuff off late at night like this. Don't need to rely on their hours where they close at like 5 p.m. So look for a post office like that in your area. This is like the main post office for Green Bay. So anyways, that's all I've got today. I'm going to go home, edit this, have some dinner, and uh, go to bed. So I will see you tomorrow in the next video.